Have you ever thought about using a Wi-Fi SD card on your 3D printer? Let's check it out. Long story short, I was talking with one of our community members named MindForge in the comments about 8266 modules. And he said next to Octoprint, he'd had the most luck with Wi-Fi SD cards. And to be honest, I've never even heard of Wi-Fi SD cards. So he sent me a link to a tutorial by RJ Make. Turns out, I already know RJ. In fact, I had lunch with him when I was at Earth. So I contacted RJ and he'd already moved to Octoprint, but said he had a few of these extra cards laying around and he'd sent me one to try out. And here's what he sent. This is a Toshiba Flash Air 32 gig 10 speed class Wi-Fi enabled SD card. This is the W-03 model. There is a newer version called the W-04, but this one has most of the features that we want to use. So MindForge also followed up with a little bit more information on how to get one of these configured, and he sent me a link to Matt's Hub. And if you've never checked out the blog, Matt's Hub, definitely go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. There's lots of great information there. So I thought we'd take a minute, try to get this thing set up following Matt's directions, and see how it works. So let's head to the configuration. So this is the article over on Matt's Hub. There is a lot of good information here. I'm going to be loosely following this, but the main goal is to be able to get this set up and try it out just to see how it works on the 3D printer. So the first thing we need to do is make sure the firmware is up to date on this SD card. And Matt does offer a link for the W02 and the W03. So we'll go ahead and take this link for the W03 and get the update software. And we'll scroll down a little ways and we'll get the version for Windows. So the download's complete. We'll head over to Downloads. We'll extract all, and we'll click on it to install. We'll hit next, hit next, install, and finish. And that put an icon on our desktop. We'll double click that. It tells you it wants you to close applications, remove unnecessary peripheral devices, backup data stored on the card. I can't do most of that, so we're just going to hit OK. We will plug in our SD card. It's on drive letter E, and we'll hit update. Do you want to update the software? OK. And it wants you to use the safely remove function to remove the SD card. So we'll come down here, right click on your USB icon, hit eject removable disk E. We'll remove the card, put it back in, and we'll hit OK. And again, it wants you to repeat the same process. So we'll safely remove, remove the SD card, plug it back in, and hit OK. And one more time, safely remove SD card, remove it, put it back in, hit OK. Software has been updated successfully. Hit OK. Now moving on. There's three modes that you can use this SD card in. You can use it in access point mode, STA mode, or internet pass-through mode. Access point mode will make the card behave like a normal wireless access point, although Matt is saying you do not have any direct internet access. STA is station mode, and that should make it just act like a regular LAN device, which is what we want to do. And then internet pass-through mode, that's going to let your SD card connect to the internet. You should still be able to access the SD card, but it's also going to bridge that traffic to the access point. So I don't really want that either. So STA mode it is. So we'll open up Windows Explorer. We'll go to our SD card that we just updated. And if you don't have hidden files turned on in Windows, you're going to need to do that to be able to see the configuration files. So let's go to View and check the Hidden Items box. Then we want to go into the SD WAN folder, and we'll right click on config, and we're going to edit it with Notepad++. So we really don't need any of these default values, so you can just go ahead and highlight and delete them all. But we need to add some custom ones. So we'll start with the ID value, ID equals flash air, all caps. And then we need app name, we'll do flash air card, all lowercase. And then you need app SSID. This is your wireless network ID. And remember, these are always case sensitive. So there's my wireless network. Then we need app network key. This is your wireless network's password. Then we're going to set app auto time to zero, so it never times out. We're going to set app mode to five, because five is station mode. We'll set the upload directory, updir equals forward slash, that's the root directory. And we're going to set an upload value equal to 1, and then a web dab value equal to 2. The W03 cards and up have web dab support, 
That's what enables you to use Windows folders on the SD card so we can pass files back and forth with a network share. We'll see more of that in a minute. So we should be good here. We can save the config file. We can close this and we'll open up our browser and let's remove the SD card now that we have the config set and we'll put it back in. And then from our browser, we're going to go to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash flash error card all lowercase. And if everything was successful, you should come to this start screen. So we can go ahead and hit start. It's going to ask you to enter your SSID and your password again, but we already put it in the config file. You can just blank these out if they're filled in and hit OK. And it's going to ask you if you want to change those settings, just hit cancel. And this is the screen you should see. Now you would think you'd be able to transfer files within this screen, just drag and drop, but you can't. But Matt has created a GUI that you can use to do exactly that. So let's go ahead and get that installed. So back to Matt's hub, we'll just go ahead and hit download here. Go to downloads, flash air interface, we can just extract all. And you want to copy this folder and this file. We want to go back to our SD card into SDWLAN. And we can just paste them both right here. Now we can go back to the browser with the SD card. Let's go ahead and unplug and plug back in the SD card. We'll minimize this and hit refresh in the web browser. And now you come to the screen that Matt created. He used a Prusa i3 Mark II, but you can just drag and drop files onto this screen. You can also go into those files that we just copied over the SD card and edit them to call it whatever printer you'd like. But just for a test, let's drop some G code in here. We'll take this Benchy G code, and it took roughly 20 seconds to upload, so not so bad. So this is all fine and good. We can drag and drop G code files onto the SD card from the web browser. But what I really want to do is use this SD card as a Windows file share. And as stated over on Matt's hub, the best way to do that is to make that SD card have a static IP. And there's a couple of things we have to change around to get it to do that. Now I've shown how to create static IPs on devices many different ways, but I'm going to go ahead and follow Matt's direction here and use an IP scanner on the network to figure out what IP we can use. So the first thing we're going to do is go back to our config file and add DHCP enable equal no. This will stop it from getting an automatic dynamic address and so we can use the static addresses. So back to the config file, we'll just paste DHCP underscore enable equal no right there and we'll go ahead and hit save. We have to enter all of our IP information in here as well, but we really don't know what that is yet. So I'm going to use angry IP scanner to figure this out. So let's go back to our browser, we'll search for angry IP scanner. This should be a free download. Download's complete, we'll go ahead and install it. If you don't have Java installed, it's gonna require that, so it's gonna direct you to the Java website. I'm gonna go ahead and install Java. We'll restart the IP scan install. Hit next. Program files is fine, install. Run angry IP scanner, finish. We can close the information for now. And for most networks, the IP range default for home networks is gonna be fine. This is what my IP address range is. I have seen .0, .0 networks, but go ahead and give this one a try first. So let's just go ahead and hit start. It's going to check every IP in that range, all 255 of them. The scan's complete. Now this isn't going to be 100% accurate. There could be some devices that have IPs on your network that just aren't currently on. But it's a pretty safe bet in most home networks. If these are listed as red, you're probably not using that IP. The blue ones are definitely active. And the one at the top is usually your router or your gateway. And the net mask on this network for 255 addresses is going to be 255.255.255.0. So it's probably pretty safe to just go ahead and pick one of these IPs that's red. So I'm just going to go with 192.168.1.40. So let's go back to our config file. Let's do IP underscore address equals 192.168.1.40 and we'll do subnet mask equals 255.255.255.0 then default gateway that's the IP of your router if you have a one dot address most of the time it's going to be 192.168.1.1 and then we'll add preferred DNS server equals the same as the default gateway your router 192.168.1.1 and that should be it. So we can go ahead and save this config file again. Let's unplug the SD card and plug it back in. Now we should be able to go to our browser. 
and connect to that IP we assigned. 192.168.1.40 and here's our flash air card. But now we can also assign this a drive letter on our Windows PC. So we'll go back to an Explorer, go to this PC, you can right click down in here in Devices and Drives, add a network location, next, choose a custom network location, next, and you can type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address of that card, 192.168.1.40. Hit next, and then you can make a name for it, whatever you'd like. Let's call it Wi-Fi SD. Hit next, and we can go ahead and open it when we finish. Go ahead and hit finish. And there it is. Now I'm gonna make a shortcut for this on my desktop, so I'm gonna right click, create shortcut, drag that to my desktop, there's my shortcut, and anytime I have a G code file, I can just grab it and drag it to that shortcut, and it'll send it to my SD card. And there you go. Now the G code's on the SD card. Now anytime we want to print something, we can just send our G code over to that SD card, come to our printer, hit the LCD screen, and print it. So we'll insert our Wi-Fi SD card. Let's rename this Benchy G code to Benchy Wi-Fi so we know what file we're using. And then we'll drag our G code over to our shortcut, go to the printer's LCD, Go to the SD card, and there's our 3D Benchy Wi-Fi. So let's print it. And we're printing. And now we're up and printing on our Wi-Fi SD card. There were a couple of things I ran into while I was getting this configured. If you're using one of these multi-card readers via USB on your computer, you might want to consider using a smaller one. Because I was having problems with the Wi-Fi SD card communicating with the internet and the computer at the same time. The smaller ones seemed to work just fine. Also, I tried a couple of different 3D printers. Most of the printers worked okay, but I was having that same issue on a few of them, where you couldn't get to Wi-Fi and have the printer read the card at the same time. So be aware of that. A big thanks to RJ for sending me the card, and to MindForge to even letting me know they existed. Now, the Wi-Fi SD card isn't going to be for everyone. Octoprint is still way easier and has a lot more functionality. But there might be certain scenarios where you can't use Octoprint, and the Wi-Fi SD card might come in really handy. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.